Hello again, students. This Excel video will be looking at how do you calculate annuity values in Excel, um, including building out a life table for yourself. So again, this example is from the course notes on contingent payments. So if you haven't listened to that lecture or read through those notes yet, please go and do so. But otherwise we'll be applying this to build your own spreadsheet to be able to calculate annuity values. So the first thing we'll need to do annuity values is a completed life table. So you can see I've got the start of one here and we're going to look at completing it. So we have the DX values as well as a starting um, LX value. So if you think of the LXs as the number still alive and the DXs as the amount that have died in that year, then the next LX value, the LX plus one, is simply going to be the number alive at the start of age 65 minus the number that died before age 66. So we can copy that formula down and complete this section of the life table. And now PX is the probability that a life alive at age X is alive at age X plus one. So we're using our formula over here. We can see that PX is equal to LX plus one on LX because that's the amount of people alive in exactly one year divided by the amount alive this year. So for PX, we can take LX plus one and divide it by LX. So this isn't an exact percentage, but that's okay. And we can copy that right down to the bottom, excluding the last one, because there's no future values. Everything stops at 75. And we can see that this is now the complete life table. So to calculate an annuity, I've got the formula again from the lecture notes, the expected present value of a lifetime annuity of C dollars per annum in arrears is going to be the sum from time one because it's in arrears. So the first payment is going to be in one year's time up to W minus X. So it's just the end value of the life table is going to be the amount times the probability that they are alive to receive the payment multiplied by a discount factor because we want the present value. So this is extending from our previous exercises where you might've just had the amount times a discount factor. We're just adding in a probability because these annuities are only paid if the life is alive at that time to receive the payment. So how we might do this is if we're looking at an example where we want an amount of a thousand dollars per annum paid in arrears using this life table, we want to find the expected present value of this annuity. So we need the three components. So we have the annual payment, which is 1000. So that's already complete. Then we need the probability that they are alive at that time to receive the payment. So again, from the formula, the probability that they receive the payment at time one or at time T is LX plus T on LX. So the, that represents the probably that a life that was alive at X is still alive at X plus T. So we can put that probability in as LX plus T. So the next LX value on the original LX. And again, we need an absolute reference that first LX because the, all these probabilities are based on the information that we already have. And that's that they're alive at LX. We don't know anything beyond that. So we can copy that formula down. And again, a good sense check is that the probability that they're alive at time 10 is zero because we know that zero lives are alive at time 75. 
So then the final thing we need is the discount factor, which we've used in previous videos and previous examples and tutorials. So we're going to take one plus our rate of interest. So we've been given 5%. And as from before, we need to absolute reference that. So putting in the dollar signs there. And we're going to raise that to the power of the minus T. So minus the time. So that recognizes that at time one, we need a discount by one year. At time two, needs to discount by two years, etc. So that's just our discount factor. And if we are looking at this formula, we need to take the sum of the product of these three things. So this APD column, or the amount times probability times discount, we can find as the product of these three items. And we can copy that down, which can give us a total expected present value if we just take the sum of all of these. Now, from our previous videos, we can see again that we can do this more quickly using the sum product function. And in fact, we can see that we don't really need this final APD column at all. So using the sum product function, so go and have a look at the other video first if you're not as familiar with the sum product, but we can take these amounts and multiply by the probability and multiply by the discount factor. And we can see we return the same result there. So we quickly looked at building out a life table and using a life table to calculate an annuity value by both finding an additional column for amount times probability times discount, but also using the sum product function. So next, we're just gonna do one additional step. So we're gonna use this same life table, which we derived on the previous tab, but we're going to solve for lifetime annuity values iteratively. So again, from the lecture and the lecture notes, we can see that the lifetime annuity at time X, the value is equal to PX divided by one plus I times one plus the lifetime annuity value of X plus one. So this is derived in lectures. So please go check that out if you are not familiar with this formula or how it works. But we wanna look at why this iterative formula is so useful and how we can apply it in Excel. So in applying it, we know the value of one of the lifetime annuity values always. And that is the one for the last age. So if you think about what an, a lifetime annuity does, and in this case we're doing paid in arrears, is it pays $1 at the end of the year if the person survives that year. Well, if we look at age 74, no one survives to age 75. So the value of a lifetime annuity for age 74 is going to be zero because no one will receive a payment in one year's time because no one is alive. So we can think of that as A74 is equal to zero. So that's in the same notation as up here, A74. So we can input that into Excel. So I've just added a zero there. Now, because we have the rest of the life table, we can now solve for all the other lifetime annuity values starting from the bottom and working our way up. So if we know A74 is zero, our A73 is going to equal our P73, this is just following the formula, which we found here, and dividing by one plus our interest rate, which we have saved here. And again, we're going to use absolute referencing to make sure that we don't to make sure that the same interest rate is used for all of these values. And then we're gonna take that and multiply again using this formula by one plus 
and then ax plus one is going to be this value just below it, ax plus one. And then we can drag this up. This is using the same formula going all the way up. So we can see that for a65 is equal to p65 divided by one plus i times a66, just like in the formula. And it's a really simple way to now get the whole table of future lifetime annuity values. So that's the end of the video for calculating annuities and life tables in Excel. If you have any questions, please let us know in the iLearn forums.